Hi everybody, my name is Roman and it's Marketing Watch House and we continue the topic about BigQuery and GA4 and the last time we solved the problem with uh, unnesting, GA session ID and time conversion and also time step conversion and today we're gonna to make it just a bit more beautiful and make it actually work and probably move it either to events or session level data I think events is gonna go first and so what I'm gonna do, first of all, I got rid of the event timestamp equals something because I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna do the we statement and I'm gonna do this uh, just for the simplicity. Uh, it's not necessarily needed in this case, but because BigQuery does not punish me for the resources I'm using, I'm just gonna use it for simplicity in writing code. So I'm gonna say from source, and this is gonna be number one. So what else I need to do, I will go right now and rename each complicated dot something value to something more usable and more feasible. And I'm also gonna remove the tables and the columns that are for my website, they just don't work. For example, event server timestamp offset is something that I'm not using, I don't need it and I will just get rid of it. Another case is user LTV. I don't have any anything regarding the LTV on my website. It's just a, a news article website. So I'm also going to get rid of that. And then we'll come back and look at what uh, I have as a result. I'll just probably speed it up. So I finished the cleaning part and now what I end up with. First of all, I got rid of all the dot stars values because it's kind of difficult to control them. I have so many different things happening in my Google Analytics, uh, which are not actually happening. Since I'm not using app, I don't using you know, e-commerce, I don't using a lot of other parameters, and you might not also using all of them. For example, you might have the GA only for Firebase. In that case, you don't really need all the desktop stuff. So what I did, I manually renamed every single column to something that I got used to. And I'm not saying it's important. It's just a very good exercise to see which values you actually can access. One of the good examples of what I found out that you can access UTM parameters, but not all of them. For example, UTM source or UTM medium exists as a separate column. But UTM term, the actual keyword the person came to your site through, it is not as a column, you need to create it manually. So let's have a look at what I did so far. So first of all, I rearranged columns to something that I got used to and that I like. So we start with event date, when the event actually happened, and then the event timestamp, when exactly it happened inside it. And it's very important that event date is happening through, like, event date is coming from event timestamp internally. So if you wanna, in the future, work with sessions, you need to find that first event date inside the session, but we will get to that later. So what I did next, I also put the GA session ID in the beginning of the columns because it's very important for me. Uh, also user ID and user soda ID. And I also user first touch timestamp. This is something I didn't do before, but there is such a value that is called user first touch timestamp. You convert it to timestamp and you get what when it was the actual first touch in the side the time uh, in, for this user. And if, by the way, you Google GA4 and then the parameter or value you're looking for, you will end up seeing this, which is BigQuery expert schema, and it will give you actually the information what field means what, because right now, by default, the description values are not filled inside the BigQuery. But let's uh, go on. I put event name and then I rename params.key into params underscore key, params.value.string value to params underscore string value, and I did it for every single one. Again, doesn't change anything, I just renamed it for simplicity in the code that I'm gonna use for in the future. The same I think with the traffic source, you see there is a name, medium, and source, and I renamed name into channel and medium into UTM medium, UTM source, but I, there is no, at least I couldn't find anything that is search term related. Let's just go and double check. So we see here um, app in for traffic source, name, medium and source. There is nothing, uh, there is no content and there is no term. So what else we have here? We have geo continent, geo country, geo region and geo city and there is also subcontinent but I don't need it so I just get rid of it. Uh, but you can use it if you want. There's also a lot of information about device because the schema for GA4 are coming actually from Firebase. And also there is a language and a very new and interesting thing that I didn't know that, I, uh, that exists, 
but it's actually very important. It's called device dot is limited ad tracking. And as you know, lately there is a lot of going on into how to limit the ad tracking. And I just created a separate column for that. And what else we have browser and browser version. And I got rid about like, I got rid of about like 50% of all the columns, which I'm not gonna use. And right now, if you look, it looks very neat. It's like, it's much shorter and I can start working with it. So the next iteration, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create things like page location. I will take it from param key and create a separate column. And how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna use the same max clause uh, and just let me show it to you how it's gonna work. So I'm gonna copy paste this and let's go and create it somewhere, let's say after the traffic stuff. So if it uh, params.key equals to page title, then takes take params string value. So it's gonna be, uh, no, then it's gonna be params value string value yeah, because we're working with a raw data set, else null over the same partition and then call it as a page title. It's not the only way you can do this. You can do it without the window definition, just in the next aggregation. And I'm gonna show you how to do this, but just for simplicity, let's create a few more columns so uh, we can work with this. So page title, let's also do the page location. And it's going to be the same thing and then it's going to be page location and let's create another one which is going to be page refer by the way the window definition functions they take more memory and space inside bigquery so if you do have a huge load a huge data set you might want to work with a just average just normal max function than the window definition so this is going to be page refer so now if i run it it should create me this. Let me show, let me, here it is. So now I have the page title, page location, and page referrer for each event. Now it looks much cl more clean, much more neat, something that I actually can work with. So we either can continue doing it for each param key, or we can just move on. And what I suggest, we move on and I'm gonna show you how to make uh, another aggregation on top of that. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna say, again, this one is source. Um, you can combine it together, please don't argue with this. I'm not arguing, I'm just doing something. And this is important part, by the way, guys. I'm trying to do something that I will understand. I don't have any requirements regarding how much time it will take to run, how much money it will take to run. I'm doing something that is the most valuable thing. I, like I know this code very well. And if I need to add something, I know where to go. And I recommend you to do the same thing. Do not just copy paste stuff. Try to go through the columns, learn it and organize it in a way you, look, you like to look. I like to have columns in the end of the line. If you like them in the beginning, just do it this way and this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna do same second software and say events aggregated and do select and then from what was the name of the it it was it was source uh, so select from source and i'm gonna take um event date event timestamp okay we go here and we say event date i will just copy from the bottom it's going to be faster. Event timestamp stamp. It's, it's a bit difficult for my MacBook to to work with BigQuery because if you don't know, by the way, BigQuery is relatively heavy by itself. Uh, not even mentioning how, how many tabs I have. It's going to have GA session ID, user pseudo ID, which is going to be the same for the whole session. Uh, user first touch timestamp is also going to be the same. Don't necessarily need to change anything there. And everything that uh, event name and then let's do let's keep param key let's string everything that is param related and then I just want to like literally copy everything else and what else we have we have a few more I'm sorry it takes so much time I will probably just a bit speed it up 
But the thing is, it's, it's very important because it's one of the last touches for you to be able to actually construct something that make a lot of sense. Um, browser and browser version. So this is all the columns I have. So what I'm gonna do right now, I know that event date, event timestamp, and this kind of stuff, they do not change. And this is, I'm gonna have an event aggregated table. So I'm gonna group by them and I'm gonna maximize everything else. It's not necessarily, I actually can just group by those things, but I don't wanna do that just in case I skipped something. It's not the best practices, but, I've seen this done several times and I think it's actually quite a nice solution to every, to any case when you might have a skipped value. So it does not copy for me. Here it is. And now we just go and do it for every single value. Again, you can do it differently. There are several solutions to every single problem in the world. And there is, there are definitely several solutions for the SQL problem. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna rename them again and come back to you in a second. So I finished doing this, so what I end up with is event date, event timestamp, GA session ID, user pseudo ID, user first touch timestamp and event name going to be my aggregated things. And actually you don't need to have so many, you can have event date, event name, event timestamp and GA session ID and that will be already enough. But just for simplicity, I use all six of them, but they kind of unique for session. And everything else, I just aggregate. Again, you, the majority of them are gonna be unique for sessions, which I mean is device operation system is not gonna be changed just in the middle of session. It's not how it works. But by maximizing this value, I just take whatever the value is there. And if every single row contains, for example, I don't know, uh, windows, 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 windows. So the maximum, the maximum of these same values is going to be still the same value, but I don't need to deal with the cases when, for some specific reason, it might not have a value. So I just aggregate it, and what I end up with is actually a very nice looking event level database. Look here, it's event date, event timestamp, uh, J session ID. And as you can see, this is the same session ID one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. And there was six events during this session was the first visit, session start, page view, then was scroll, then was some engagement, uh, then was another page view, scroll, and there's another engagement. And then the person left. And I can see what was the page title for each of the steps, uh, what was the page location of this, what was the referrer of this session and all other information. Let's try find out something else, somebody else who was actually moving between different pages. So we go here, this is the person. So it was another session, uh, ends up with 64, uh, some other user pseudo ID, another date. And as you can see, the person came from Google Organic. Makes sense, I don't have any advertising on my website. Session started was the page view of the marketing watch house, which most probably was the title page, the home page. There was some user engagement and then person went to another page view, which was BigQuery Google Ads marketing watch house. And then if I'm not mistaken, there was the last one, which was goes again, page view, Google BigQuery plus Google Ads keywords report template in SQL. So the person went to the main page, then to some category page, and then to the page with a solution to the problem. And again, the values are the same, but I have a nice looking event uh, based uh, event based data mark that now I can work with. So the only thing that is left here is to make a session level data mark. Uh, the, the another thing I wanted to show to you is that these, this window definition stuff here, you can actually accept the session ID, which I don't want to, you can do this, uh, copy it, the window definition, paste it here and do the same max case when params.key, which is gonna be probably params underscore key equals page title, then params string value, else null, and then just get read over because it's not relevant anymore. You already have aggregation and that would be exactly the same result. You don't necessarily need to make the window definition 
to work with this stuff. Let me just fix the mistake. Why it doesn't have the params.key? It's param key, okay. Makes sense. So param key, page title, as page title. And let's just compare. So we, we absolutely sure it is the same value. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get rid of this and put it here and say page title compare. Does it work? It doesn't work because I here. So there are two variants. In one case, you have less code and you might have several specific analysis you want to do. And in that case, you do the window definition or with, with the, within the GA session ID, for example. But if you don't necessarily need to, and your goal is to come up with the event level data, you can just use the classic maximum function. And as you can imagine, with max case when param key equals something, then give me the value, you can extract any event from your database. Like uh, whatever event you might have in JE4, you can create it as a column easily. And everything. And the only thing that you have left here is just to create the GA session level. And this is what we're gonna do next time. Stick with me, subscribe to this channel, leave comments below. If you have any private comment, just write me to LinkedIn or just write to me. I, I like when people write to me. And uh, I hope it, this, this video helps to you. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.